So Outlast, Claustrophobia and Runaway Simulator. I can totally juke these guys out. No you can't. I'm just built different. Okay, I'll juke from the other side. As you can tell, we have a special guest, first time Dead Clown MP3 who speedrun this game a multitude of times. That's all I get? Just a speedrunner? That's how I'm introduced? Uh, Alright, how's this? From the depths of limbo, a licensed Outlast Gooner, speedrunner and testament main himself, let's give a round for... Dead Clown MP3! You might need a better writer for the script, and voice actor, but I'm here for that. I do need that, but gamers make do. Now, let's get on to the story of Outlast, a staple for the first person horror genre. Is this my cue, or... Quick heads up, there will be some spoilers. Story starts off with Miles Upshur, a freelance investigative journalist who is investigating the Mount Massive Asylum in Lake Country, Colorado. Given how this is a horror game, we're giving him only tidbits of the mystery at a time while meeting some crazy characters like the Big Pig Man, Corny Cannibals, and a nameless scary page to name a few. Of course, there's more to this story than meets the eye. There's no way you just ripped that from Wikipedia. Kinda. Endgame though. So Miles becomes a horror. Is this really a review? You're skimming a good check of the story. At least 70% of the latter story. This is to entice them to play the day. <laughs> this is to <laughs> entice them to play themselves. I don't want to spoil it too much. Fuck spoilers, just run up the Miles POV. Alright, fair point. So Miles is important to being not only an eyewitness to the monstrosities, but for its development, given how he witnesses the horrors of the Wall Rider and even a key player in attending it. He's not a verbal character, though his writing in the notes expresses his thoughts about the situation. His ability to power through the madness and the sound speaks for itself in addition with how he doesn't fight the monsters. What about Whistleblower? That's like, the other half of the story, that's the DLC. You wanna handle that, but not too many spoilers? No promises. Whistleblower is a DLC birth after the original Outlast detailing the events prior to the game. You start off as Wayland Park, the Whistleblower, who lures Miles into the hellish asylum we all love. From there, the game follows a similar trail to the first one with a bunch of little easter eggs from the main game and ends a little bit after the Outlast initial ending. So the story in the DLC story I taken care of, so on to the gameplay or mechanics? Isn't that the same? So mechanics are the features of the game, like how in Outlast you don't have the means of attacking, more so hiding while gameplay is how everything feels when it's all put together, like music, graphics, difficulty, and mechanics all put together. So why is the order mechanics, gameplay, music? graphics difficulty, and not mechanics, music, graphics difficulty, and then gameplay. I I made the formula in like 2021, 22, and I just never changed it. Too lazy? I, I just never consider any alternatives. Can't fix what isn't broken. I mean, I mean, if you say so. <laughs> I'm pretty up sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> so the mechanics of Outlast Falls is this. You run, jump, record, hide, press some buttons, click some various documents that give more lore and details, and finally some batteries for your camera, that records the horrors and hope you don't die. It should be noted that there's no mechanics of attacking in this game. That's right, zero offense with full ability to sprint with areas to crawl and hide under to avoid death. Adding to that, what lacks for what Miles lacks in manpower is what he makes up for in adaptability. A lot of the scenes in the game are very cinematic and the story loves to reward you by allowing you to collect documents and, re and recordings of the asylum. A common motif in the Outlast game is the main character's hiding survival attributes, but their lack of overall manpower. Many of the offensive moments in the game are purely cinematic and highlights of Miles' innocence during this ordeal. There are achievements in the game based on and around what you record and even little notes. Miles leaves behind to this situation, either saying fuck this or with his wavering stomach looking like at the horns of the asylum. While running for your life in the game, the sound effects and songs help set the atmosphere that your life is in danger, that each encounter you survive was with the skin of your teeth. It fits, since you're exploring a mystery with horrors beyond man, often trapped in a hurry to escape. The music played during jump scares as the effects of horrifying reveals consistently make you at unease and everything that's so eerie. If you ever need a proper gym motivation, then try listening to the Outlast OST while running at night or on a treadmill. The orchestra and the eerie music that plays when you're trying so hard not to get caught really doubles down on the experience. The music adds onto the ominous nature of the game, but as a player it reminds you that you have to be careful because every footstep counts, especially the ones that aren't yours. Yeah, if you're closing your eyes while playing, the gloomy, bloody, and ominous environment is glorious. I think most modern laptops and desktops should run this game by itself, fine. 
as someone who played this on their Switch and, a, and my little Giga gaming laptop, the game graphics remind me of the OG PS3 and the Xbox 360 days that we thought were so realistic and almost like 4K in comparison. But looking at it now, it kind of looks like a leapfrog. Maybe. Though by itself, it ran well enough and the graphics are great. I mean, yeah, it was, but, but it was f still fun though. Speaking of a fun time with Outlast, is the game fun to its difficulty or the thrill that you haven't died yet? Outlast has several difficulties. The harder the mode you choose, the less resources you have for batteries and chances to continue if you die. So with the easy mode, you have plenty of batteries, questionable AI, and are able to save without any worries. While in the harder settings like Lunatic, less resources, smarter AI, and if you die once you get sent right back to the start of the game like a roguelike that wants to s slam like a hammer into your PC. There's still plenty of batteries to use, right? No, most speedrunners use the map layout and droppings to their advantage and never pick up batteries and just blitz the whole game. Man, speedrunners are something else. So how did it feel for your first playthrough? Even with not speedrunning the game though, the gameplay would be fresh for its time, spanning back to 2013 actually. Uh, I was already spoiled thanks to the internet at the time, but overall the gameplay was solid, not being able to attack and being the prey made me anxious. I played on the easy mode, so my experience wasn't too dreadful. How about yours though, given how you beat the game like loads of times? I've beaten the game around 4 to 5 times now, but when I first played the game, I played with my cousins and it felt like a community effort trying to beat the game. I had it downloaded 10 years past its hype, but to me the game still felt fresh and fun. As I played the game, the more it felt like a challenge, it gradually just pulled me in. It was a mix of that and seeing what kind of shit you could pull off on the boss without getting caught or killed. I never beat Lunatic Mode though. Lamau. I'd say this meshes with replay replayability. This game is short. Once you finish it, you might feel a little bit of Stockholm Syndrome depending on what mode you started on. You might decide to run it back just so you can read more documents, fuck over the hostiles, maybe even create a game review. Yep. Plenty of replayability if you want to be prey against AIs. Aside from replayability, there are a few things that could have been added for the game experience. I think adding moments where the enemies get the camera, you need to retrieve them from, like, it's clearly a trap, but you can get the camera and find a way to juke them out, like in the sewers maybe. Moving on from what ifs, and any tips and tricks for the people? Are you sure? You sped around this game a good amount of times, I played this through like maybe once? Yeah, I'm positive. I guess I do have a little bit of credibility then. Some tips and tricks for playing the game, some things that, that might help beginners and speedrunners alike, I think just being aware of your objective helps. I think people screw themselves over when they don't know where to go and of course that's against attention. You don't always know what corner to take and that's the whole point of what the game is trying to do to you. So you shouldn't be too critical of yourself if you pick the wrong corner. I don't believe the game is too punishing on the easier difficulties but I mean some people have played the game like a million horror games and others have just played one or two. Things that helped me beat this game were just trial and error, finding good blind spots and remembering the map layout. So, for horror enthusiasts, I think you'll get a good kick out of this one. Great atmosphere, music, and story and character is pretty neat. The everyday man journalist encounters man-made horrors and does his best to record it all. With that all said, I hope you enjoyed the video, comment your thoughts about Outlast. Any last words? Dead Clown MP3? With what I've- with all the shit that I've been through, whatever happens in this game is completely up to you. If you want Stockholm Syndrome, this game will give it to you, free of charge. And the last boss fight still gives me chills. If you're looking for a game to record, it's a popular Twitch game with the horror genre and all the goaded as a franchise. Thanks for watching and check out my channel DeadClownMP3 for gaming and music content. Wait, you did music content? Ah, I ain't got nothing. Alright everybody, thanks for watching. Peace.